during our next class, I'm going to ask you to prove two sets with given operations are groups. So this video is just showing you an example, two examples, of how to do that. The first example is the set G of all numbers of the form a plus b times the square root of 2, where a and b are rational numbers, and either a or b, or both, is not equal to 0. Remember the or in mathematics is always an inclusive or, one or both. So in other words, g does not contain the number 0. Prove that g is a group under regular multiplication. Well, the first thing we have to do always is verify that the operation is a binary operation on the set. We know that when you multiply two real numbers, you're only going to get one thing, but we do need to show that g is closed under the operation. So to do this, let's pick two arbitrary elements of g. We'll say let let a1 plus a b1 times the square root of 2 and a2 plus b2 times the square root of 2 be elements of g. So they are arbitrary elements of g. And then we want to multiply them together. a1 plus b1 square root of 2 times a2 plus b2 times the square root of 2. You can do this on scratch paper and you get uh, you get a1, a2, plus 2b1, b2, that's a rational number, plus another rational number, a1, b2, plus b1, a2, that rational number times the square root of 2. You multiply that out and see that you do get a number of this form. We had to show that the product was a rational number plus another rational number times the square root of 2. And we did, so this is an element of g, and we have shown that g is closed under the operation multiplication. We need to uh, mention that multiplication is associative, and we don't need to prove that. We know that multiplication in the real numbers is associative. So you just mention it. Part b we need to find, we need to show that there is an identity. Well, we know that 1 is the multiplicative identity, so all we have to do is show that 1 is an element of g. So 1 is equal to 1 plus 0 times the square root of 2, which is an element of g. So we have the identity. Now we need to find inverses for each element in G. Well, we know that G is a subset of the real numbers, and we know what the multiplicative inverse of, of a number is. It's just its reciprocal. So if I say let A plus B times the square root of 2 be in G, arbitrary element in G, I know that 1 over a plus b times the square root of 2 is its multiplicative inverse. The question is, is it in g? That's what we need to show. So in order to do this, you would rationalize the denominator and see if you could put it into the, the correct form. So let's see, how do we do that? 1 plus a times b times the square root of 2, and we would multiply it by a minus b times the square root of 2 over a minus b times the square root of 2 in order to rationalize the denominator. And we get a minus b times the square root of 2, and we have on the bottom a squared uh, minus 2b squared. And then we can separate, and we have a over a squared minus 2b squared plus 
uh, minus b over a squared minus 2b squared times the square root of 2. So this is a rational number, and minus b over a squared minus 2b squared is a rational number. So we have shown that indeed the reciprocal is in G. So this proves that G is a group. Our second example is a set of functions, linear functions. Let capital F be the set of all functions F mapping R to R such that f of x is ax plus b, where a and b are real numbers, and a, the coefficient of x, is not zero. Prove that capital F is a group under the operation function composition. So first we have to verify that function composition is a binary operation on F. The only thing we have to show is that given two functions, f and g, in f, that f composed with g and g composed with f are both linear functions. In other words, they, they are in capital F. So let's take fg of x. The multiplicative notation means f circle g of x, or f of g of x. And if we take g of x and put that into f, we have f of cx plus d. And if you then multiply a times cx plus d and add b, applying the rule for f, we get a cx plus and then we have AD plus B. So this is certainly an element of F. Since A and C are not equal to zero, then we know that AC is not equal to zero. We have to verify that. AC is not zero, so this function is in F. Then we need to look at G of F of X. And doing the exact same procedure, you get ACX plus the real number bc plus d. And again, ac is not equal to zero, and this is a linear function, so it is in f. Therefore, f is closed under the operation. So we can conclude that uh, function composition is indeed a binary operation. We know that function composition is an associative operation, um, so we don't need to prove it, but let's just write it down to make sure that you understand the notation. Uh, we know that f, excuse me, f g h is equal to f g h, but that's in multiplicative group notation. What this means is f circle g circle h is equal to f circle g circle h using function composition notation. And we know that that is true for functions. So what would be the identity, part b here? We need to find the identity, and let's call it little i of x. It just is the identity function. Little i of x is equal to x. Now, we should show that that is the identity. This is what we claim to be the identity. Because, well here we prove it, i of f of x is equal to f of x, and f of i of x is equal to, well, i of x is x, so it's f of x. So when we compose little i 
with any function f in capital F, we get the function back again. In other words, if is equal to fi is equal to f for all f in capital F. Lastly, we have to prove that given any f in capital F, that its inverse is also in capital F. So let's start by picking an arbitrary f in there. So let f be in capital F, where f of x then is equal to ax plus b, and a is not equal to 0. We want a function that will undo what f has done. In other words, we want g of f of x to be equal to, uh, to x. So we're going to want to uh, undo what f did, and it multiplied by a, so g of x will have the coefficient 1 over a times x, and notice if we were to multiply f of x times 1 over a, we're going to get b over a, and we have to subtract that. And you may have a different way of solving for that, but let's see what happens. Let's look at g of f of x. That would be 1 over a times ax plus b minus b over a, putting in f of x into the rule for g. And so now multiplying, we see we get x plus b over a minus b over a, we have x. And likewise, if you take f of g of x, you're putting g of x into the rule for f, uh, so that's 1 over ax minus b over a, and when you multiply that by a, now apply the rule for f, a times uh, 1 over a times x minus b over a plus b, and notice you will get x. So we have found an inverse, and I could rename that now, f inverse of x is equal to 1 over ax minus b over a. And we have proven that uh, the function is a binary operation and that the three properties of a group are satisfied. The function is associative, we found an identity, and we have found an inverse for an arbitrary function in capital F. I just wanted to spend a couple minutes on the dihedral group, D4, the one that we discussed in class today. Uh, it is the group of symmetries of a square. It is a group of functions, functions or mappings that map the square back onto itself. And we found that we found that if we just consider the rotation of 90 degrees and one of the flips, I think H was the horizontal flip, but it doesn't matter that all of the other symmetries of the square could be expressed in terms of R and H. And these were the eight that exist. I'd like to give you the calculation rules for this group um, so that you can use it as you finish to filling out the group table for class on Tuesday. So let me give you the rules for operating in this group. Uh, first of all, if you flip twice, you're back to the identity. So all of these flips here, all, the ones that have H in them are all flips across an axis. And all of them, if you square them, you get the identity. But all we really need is H squared. And you know that R to the fourth is, is a 360 degree rotation, so it's back to E. These are very important, because any time you get h squared in a calculation, or r, uh, r to the fourth, you can change it to the identity. The other thing, operation rules, and we saw why today in class, is that hr is the same thing 
as r cubed h. And h r squared is the same as r squared h. And h r cubed is equal to r h. You actually did these yourself and saw that they were true. So notice here, uh, one way to remember this is, don't, don't just memorize something like that, but notice that if you flip them around, if you want to turn h r around and put h on the right, then each time you change the exponent. This was an exponent of 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. This exponent was 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. This exponent is 3, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So know these rules of operation. They'll be very handy in uh, calculating in the group. You do not need to know at all which flip, uh, which flip any of these are here. Those are all flips. If you square them, you get the identity. Let me just show you that. Let's take h r cubed and let's square it, just as an example calculation. Well, I would write h r cubed h r cubed. It's not an abelian group. I can't say h squared r to the sixth. It's not abelian. You can see that with, with these rules, right? With these rules. So I have to write h r cubed h r cubed. Now, the group is so the operation is associative, so I'm going to look at those two and I'm going to turn it around so that h is on the left. So I have h and now r cubed h is h r and then I have r cubed. So now this is h h is e and r to the fourth is e. So we have e. Any of these ones with the h in it, those are all the four flips, two on the diagonal, one vertical, one horizontal. And you know that if you do it twice, you're back to the original square. So it's not surprising that h r cubed squared is the identity. So uh, fill out the rest of your group table and bring that to class on Tuesday.